What a thrill to see a monarch in the mountains like this guy. He's right at the end of his life, full grown, 350 pounds, and he has that regal look about him. He holds his head up and looks like he owns the world, and the other younger rams come over to admire him and nuzzle him a little. He's all business. So one of the things that that uh, you touched on, Guy, and, and we've, we've touched on Grandpa Gordon's adventures, and you touched a little bit on you know, being able to follow in, in Grandpa Gordon's footsteps in 19, uh, or in 2017, we went back to Northwest Territories where he was uh, 50 years earlier. One of the cool things that uh, maybe a lot of people don't know is that, that that was just part of his sheep, you know, adventures. We, we've got a couple projects in the works and, and actually you and dad, uh, got asked by the Wild Sheep Foundation to put together um, some stuff. You got a couple years ago a lecture that you did in was it the Life Member Breakfast or Yeah, I gave a presentation, life a speech, a TED talk at the at the Life Member Breakfast. So you did you did a Life Member Breakfast on that, and then you got asked. So explain the project this year, what that's all about. Well, I, you know, they wanted when I did the Life Member Breakfast, uh, our friends Gray and Keith and and the guys over at the sheep foundation they wanted um wanted to uh glenn glenn landris was the one that actually yep. set this up he's one of the board members over there is they wanted to kind of highlight because they have that award the gordon eastman grassroots award is their the big award they give away there for a grassroots volunteer that does and that's kind of up gordon's alley we'll get into that in a minute here but um they wanted a presentation using some of that old film of Gordon's because a lot of those guys knew Gordon or knew of Gordon, watched those films and Gordon was kind of, it was a sheep guy. And so I put together that presentation and dad helped me dig up some stuff that never had really been seen. Everyone's seen Gordon's films, right? but there was some stuff that never made it into a film or that were in his very, very early stuff that, that before he actually made it into films it was his lectures at that time and so i dug all that old stuff up and it was very well received guys like you know they just like look at that old footage from the 50s and 60s and hearing those guys talk about hunting sheep back in the day and just real reminiscent so this year at the sheep show they're doing a, a theater where they have films and they have a, quite a few companies doing the, these sheep films short films like right. you see on on the inter, on youtube and stuff and they asked us to do one with some of that old footage because I think they've had a lot of requests for guys who were either there or missed it or want to see it again with that old footage. And so Dad and I have been in the crew here, the whole crew actually, it's kind of turned into a bigger project than I thought. <laughs> I thought, well, we'll just splice together that old footage and we've kind of gone you know, above and beyond just that. But kind of put, taken out all that old footage out of those films and kind of tracing Gordon's sheep roots through his his uh, trajectory shoot through the sheep world so starting off in alaska in the 50s then to you know the uh, northwest territories in the 60s and british right. columbia in the 60s and then up to the bighorns and phantom ram and all that in the 80s and kind of following through that so it's been a kind of a pretty cool project dad's been able to dig up of course a lot of really interesting tidbits like he does he's he's retired so he's quite He's our number one uh, hunt, African hunt researcher and uh, Eastman <laughs> archivist, you know. That's so he, he's really been digging deep in that and got some pretty historian. pretty neat stuff. And and one of, I think one of the things that's so special is, is dad, in typical Mike Eastman fashion, went and interviewed those guys that went with on, on those adventures with Gordon before they all died. They're all dead now. They're all gone. But they gave kind of firsthand hand. Uh, their firsthand uh, accounts of what actually happened. Because people know those iconic films, but you always talk to someone who is in them, and it's, it's, these guys are pretty funny storytellers. Yeah. It's really funny it's to hear the, the behind-the-scenes stuff of what really happened and how it some of the things really came about in all those iconic sequences. So we add a little bit of that flair in there. So it's, it's really a special look into a behind-the-scenes of those iconic films from a sheep perspective and it's in it and it's a really good uh tell of not just grandpa gordon's adventures but also of what where sheep have come from 
and and have gone. I mean, when he when Graham Gordon for his I think it was his first sheep was a California bighorn. There was very little of those those sheep left. Now yeah. there's thousands of them all up and down the you know the the coastline yeah. ranges. Well, and we they even all have came them here from the same Wyoming. spot. Yeah, yeah. Back when and this is in the fifties, there was they were there was basically the only California bighorns left at all in existence on this continent were in a small mountain range in British Columbia, right? Southern British Columbia. And Gordon and his friend Stan went up there and hunted them. They took their own horses, went up there. Paid some shot, guide 15 yeah, bucks. Yeah, paid, paid some local guy 15 bucks. So they had a resident with them, and they went up, shot two rams, a record book goat, and a black bear. And from that group of sheep that where they hunted, they British Columbia gave some to state of Washington. They brought them across the border put them in an enclosure, like a 50-acre enclosure or whatever, I think for a few years to get them climatized so they wouldn't just go back and then release them into the wild in Washington. And from that population, that's where they came from for Oregon, Idaho, California. even into Wyoming. Uh, parts I think they have some in Northern California. So that, that the California bighorns, all of them in the U.S. came from that little population. It's pretty neat. I mean, that was before Grandpa was filming, and but Dad has photos of him and Brad, his brother, looking through a spotting scope, sitting on a 1956 Chevy <laughs> bumper car in that enclosure, looking at those sheep. So that's kind of what created Gordon's fascination with sheep was that first California bighorn that he hunted, and then that took him through the whole sheep world. Until he killed that big stone sheep we have in here, and that's yep. the last sheep he ever, ever killed. Uh, the perfect ram, he called it. That was his Kootenai ram, and uh, as you'd call it. But and he never hunted sheep again. But he was into the conservation side of, of sheep, and created that award for the Sheep Foundation. Right. Yeah. It was. It's just really interesting, and what the conservation, uh, the conservation story that's parallels that in history yep. is really really neat with the sheep foundation and and then the sheep foundation having the grassroots award the gordon eastman grassroots award which they give away on the kickoff evening of the of the sheep show and you know and so it's you know it's really neat and it's really neat that we're getting involved uh, more and more with that um stuff that was yeah. started it's two important. generations ago yeah and then the film you know that film and footage it's not just about gordon he documented it but you know it's that generation of yeah. guys that yeah. those that's the generation of guys that have put sheep front and center on the conservation world saying hey we need to do something for sheep yep you know and that's they were the ones that created his generation so right. to speak of sheep hunters are the ones that created the sheep foundation and started putting all that money into sheep research transplanting right. all the transplant programs we have so all the sheep opportunities or a lot of them that we have today are because of those guys and i think that's what makes those films so special is it's a glimpse into our roots as sheep hunters right. for modern day sheep hunting you know right. what we have today um, the last thing I want to touch on a little bit is uh, there was a film done on Grandpa Gordon's. It, it's a Black Rifle uh, Fieldcraft collaboration on survival. And uh, Grandpa Gordon, as a lot of people know, uh, got stuck on the ice for a number of days in the middle of winter. And they're doing that that uh, film. Um, what What is your take on how how it was done and was it as impactful as when you read the, the or heard the story the first time? Did they do a good job, do you think? I think they did a fantastic job. I, I was skeptical at first because, I mean, these these guys are they're filmmakers, which we've been around those type of people a little bit, you know, in this industry, not hunters. They're filmmakers, and so you never know how they're going to do it, especially when it's hunting-related yeah. content. Um, but I, I think they did a fantastic job. They knocked it out of the park. As yeah. skeptical as I was, I was surprised and more on the other end when when I saw the final product. It's yeah. it's really neat. You know, it's not all about the hunting. It's about the survival, which is a little bit different twist than what we're used to here because right. that's what 
you know, we do the hunting side of it, but it's, I thought they did a fantastic job. Yeah. If you guys haven't seen it, jump on black rifles, uh, YouTube channel. Um, it is, it is unbelievable. Uh, that story and what those guys, uh, what they survived and how they did it is really, really neat. Yeah. Is it on black rifles? Yep. YouTube. It's a collaboration. It's on black rifles, YouTube channel, but it's uh field craft produced it for oh, them. Okay. Okay. As yeah. a survival expert. Gotcha. Yeah. So. Yeah, they came and did that stuff so long ago, I'd almost forgot about it. <laughs> I, <do>. <laughs> <laughs> I was just, then I thought about it one day when I was fishing this summer. I'm like, oh, well, I, they must not have liked the content and probably wrote it. I just wrote it off that maybe it didn't was turn the, into anything. And then sure enough, the other yeah. day you said, here it is. It was it was unique Send because it's the first time they did one where the survivalist isn't alive. They're like, oh, we're a little worried because everybody's going to think he died from that. And I said, well, he didn't die from that. He died in 96. Yeah, this was, Gordon had nine was lives. That was just one of them. Yeah, that's that was right. was like number four. Yeah. You know? That's right. <laughs> it was the aneurysm steelhead fishing that was number nine. <laughs> Took him out. <laughs> <laughs> he did die in Canada, but not Alaska. Yeah, on a fishing trip. Yeah. Well, there's storm clouds are gathering. We're going to have a lightning storm. I better move on. But even though I'm leaving the mountains, part of me stay here. And the Phantom Ram, why his spirit will always live on. He's got a lot of young sheep with his blood in him. But I couldn't help but wonder as I left that mountain, where is the Phantom Ram? While my father, for 50 years, was wandering around North America filming wildlife and hunting, my poor mother was left home with the bills and three wild western teenage boys to take care of. One night, she sat down at the kitchen table and wrote the lyrics to this song. I hope you enjoy it. Far beyond the sound of the city's roar where the land is like it was before There still waits a wilderness My wandering man cannot resist He walks in wonder like a wide-eyed child All through the glory of the savage wild Where he's free to live or die While the world and I go spinning by The work of early pioneers like my father Gordon and the tireless effort of conservationists including the Wild Sheep Foundation, has preserved and continues to protect the legacy of wild sheep in North America. Till he comes home.